Hello everybody, Crips here, and as always, thanks for joining little old me. Okay, this is a request video or tutorial for a guy called MuttMutt64. He asked about the BCC 3D pinart filter, and I thought, yeah, that's a really cool little filter. So I'm going to show him how to use the new 3D pinart tool or filter, and I'll be using the standalone version of Boris Graffiti. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've been getting a lot of people now who's watching me using Sonus and Sony and Adobe. So I just thought if I stick with this standalone, I'm not going to create too much confusion. Right, okay. First thing we need to do is get rid of the text track. Highlight it till it's red and then delete and that is it. Now, what we're going to do is bring in a filter. So we go to filters, OpenGL, and here we go, BCC Pin Art 3D. And that's it, we're done. Cool, no, just kidding. All right, uh, before I go on, Boris Graffiti is a stripped down version of Boris Red. And it, it doesn't give you all the options. So unfortunately, there are some things in this filter that are grayed out and that we cannot use. And later on, I'll show you what that is. And it is a pity because that part is really, really awesome. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Now go to your background and select either a video file or a still image. I'm going for still image. And it's the little Ferrari that I showed you in the beginning. Okay, so here we are. So what is pin art? Well, if you remember the old toys where there's a whole, like a square full of pins and you push your hand on it and then it shaped the hand almost in a 3D. Well, that's what pin art is. It's a better way of saying it just pixelates your picture again. And it makes it into really big pixels. But we can add more pixels and we can also decrease the size of the pixels. So let's go into the settings. So all we'll do is highlight it. And we're going to go into print pin screen. Pin screen. And here's the density master. So let's crank it up a bit. So we're going to create more pixels as, as you can see. So if I crank it right up, it almost go back to the original photo. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it about, about 180 is pretty good. And then I'm going to go into pins. And I'm going to go to the size of the pin. So I might hmm, de decrease it a little bit more, a little bit more. Because I'm trying to get that same effect that I showed you in the beginning. It's kind of cool. There you go. And now we're going to go into the built-in camera and we're going to zoom in. So it just covers the entire composition. There you go, and that should do it. Now, for those who keep asking me, well, what, what does the camera do? Why not just use resize? Well, a camera is basically like zooming in with your camera. You're tricking it. It is another way to zoom in and zoom out. And later on, I'll show you how that works is when we have text, and I'm going to go zoom past the text rather than scaling the text towards you. So you're kind of, it's like a artificial pan and zoom. That's the best I can come up with because I can't really think this early in the morning. Okay, so here's our picture. Now, like I said, you can change the amount of pixels you want to add, how big you want to add. I prefer to keep it like this. Now, all we need to do is add some animation. We go here into noise waves. How much animation? Sorry, I'm going to go back into pins first because I'm going to change the shape. Right now it says 3D discs. I want to go to 3D spheres. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. Let's go back into noise waves. And I'm going to change the amplitude. So as you can see already, the more I give it, the more wavy my picture gets. So I'm not going to go too drastic. Okay, so why did I change the spheres? I'm not sure if you can see it, but it gives you the waves a more of a rounded look. If I went into, say, the other ones, it gives you a slightly different effect. So have a play with that, but to make it look like it's just waving through your photo, like the wind's blowing on a cloth, this 3D sphere works the best. The frequency, how much of this waves do you want to appear, or how often do you want it to go... And I'm going to keep the auto involve on, and I might loop this every two seconds, depending on my clip. And I, now, if you're going to be using this in Corel Video Studio, because uh, I know a lot of people follow me there, so let's go back into Corel Video Studio. 
Uh, the way you want to add that filter is very simple. Just grab a blank solid and then just add that filter, your BCC filter through Boris FX that way. Let's just grab that for a second. Drop it on. Now once you have added the effect, it doesn't matter if you change the length of your video footage, the frequency of two seconds remains. Because I know in Corel Video Studio, if you increase this, it also slows everything down when you apply a filter. But not in the case with this, because the filter or the effect is applied within the actual filter itself. So no matter what you do, all the settings remain the same. Now if I play this, it renders, that's my render here, and there you go. And that is how you create this really cool looking effect like a little wind is blowing past you, like I, like I demonstrated in the beginning. All right, so unfortunately, I'll just stop this now. Unfortunately, there's two things in here that are really, really good, built-in lights, but it will not allow you to apply the built-in light. And if you think, oh, well, I'll just use the filter lights, guess what? That is the only way we can get around it. So we will need to use another filter to, to put the lighting effect on your video composite or whatever it is you're doing and a really neat one is that i saw was where the light was just panning past the photo it was really really cool so unfortunately you can't have the lighting effect i'm going to delete that you can't have the lighting effect within this one here okay now the last one the last one, individual FX layers. Unfortunately, this is the part which is the really, really cool part. This allows it to be in a 3D where the picture, say, of the car actually pops out. So when you start going into, say, a 3D, like if I was to go into 3D like this, you would actually see the car floating above the picture itself. Like, like I said at the beginning with the hand pushed on that little toy and all the pins come forward. That is a really, really cool effect, and unfortunately, you need a Luma track for that. And because of the Luma track, we can't do that in Boris Graffiti. So that is the only downside with the Boris Graffiti. But if you're just after something very simple like this, it's rendering again. And here we go. If you're after a little effect like this with the Pinart 3D filter, then, my friends, that is all you need to do. And as always, Thanks for watching.